Westside students, how are we doing? <laughs> hey, we are in the last week of a series entitled Worthy of It All. Um, and in this series, what we've been talking about is we've been talking about what worship really is. Um, worship's more than the songs that we sing. Worship actually has to do more with the posture of our hearts is what we've been talking about. So over the last few weeks, we've been diving into this topic of worship. Here's what we said in week one. We said that worship is surrender. At its core, this is what worship is. It's all about surrendering our lives daily to God, back to him. This is our living and active worship. And then last week, we gave a little bit of a different element of what worship is. When we face this unseen battle, we realize that the thing that we can do and the thing that we should do is to worship. Why? Because as Estrella pointed out last week, worship is our weapon. Worship is a weapon. And this week, what I wanna talk to you guys about is this, is worship brings freedom. Worship brings freedom. So uh, to start, let's watch this video. I'm Hadley Doyle. I'm a sophomore. I didn't grow up in a church. I started going to church when I was about eight with my mom, but I was just in the kids' service. I didn't really know, like, what I was doing or why I was there. It was kind of just the thing I did with my mom. When I was nine, my parents got divorced. I didn't let my emotions out at all. I bottled them up. I didn't have anyone to talk to about it because my siblings are way older than me. So I kind of just had to deal with that on my own. When I got to middle school, it was right after COVID, and I realized that I wasn't the same size as my friends anymore. And it was kind of just these thoughts I had in my head of, why am I not small enough anymore? Why am I not fitting in anymore? Like, it was start of seventh grade when these thoughts became actions. I would go about a week without eating before taking one day to eat. And this went on for about six months before I told anyone about it. I was actually at Westside the first time I spoke about it with someone. That night, I just felt like God was really calling me to listen to the message, and so I did. And it was talking about being open with what you're going through and being able to talk to people about it. And so my best friend and I, we both kind of had these burdens that we were hiding and we both just broke down and we confessed what we were going through. That was the first night that I prayed, first night in my entire life. And I just told Jesus, I was like, if you, if you care about me, then show me, like show me a sign that you're working through me. I was riding home from soccer practice with my mom and turned to me and said, what's going on? And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, what do you mean? And she's like, I got an email from your group leader about what's been happening. And I didn't know what to say. All I could make out was that I was sorry. We talked a little more and she told me that she had made me an appointment with an eating disorder specialist. And so I went to a doctor and I sat in a room with him talking about my habits and stuff. And I left that day diagnosed with avoidant restrictive food intake disorder. The doctors could help with my eating as much as they could, but the one thing they couldn't take away was the jealousy that I had, the like feeling I wasn't enough. And the only person who fulfilled that was Jesus. He really spoke to me and told me that I was a daughter of the kingdom and that he was with me. And then when I got back to school after this summer, um, I had a guy I barely talked to come up to me and ask what it was like having an eating disorder. And all I knew was that I never told this person. So I was really stressed on how he knew. And so I asked like, how did you know that? And he said that someone had told him, someone I thought I could trust um, was telling people what had happened to me. And so that was really my rock bottom, like feeling like I couldn't trust anyone. I was feeling alone. I became a mean person. I was pushing away people who were really important to me. And I started to realize that Jesus was with me um, through that process. I started getting into my word. I started really listening at church and taking it in. So yeah, worship for me, like it definitely started off as just singing songs before I knew Jesus. And now that I've learned to know who Jesus is and what he's done for me, I know that 
Worship is something I do every single day. Worship is me spending time with God, me being thankful for all He does for me. If you're holding something in, it's gonna feel like this huge weight on your heart. And I know, cause I've experienced that big burden. And so when you feel like you're being called to let someone know, then you need to let someone know because at that point, it's probably gotten too far. And telling someone, um, the outcome may not always be what you want it to be, but it's gonna help you in the end. And Jesus is gonna be with you through it all. And so if you're feeling called, then you need to tell someone because um, it's Jesus' plan for you. He's speaking to you. So just tell someone when you need it. Uh, I love Hadley's story for a lot of different reasons. Uh, one of the reasons why I love it is it, because it reminds me um, of something I, I like to remind myself of often, and it's this phrase. It says that it's, it's okay to not be okay, but it's just not okay to stay that way. It's okay for us to not be okay, but it's just not okay for us to stay that way. And because she raised her hand and said, hey, I, I'm not okay, she got help. And because she got help, she found freedom. And not only freedom from uh, this, this disorder, but also freedom from, from this jealousy that was happening on the inside. Question, what's keeping you from experiencing total freedom? M maybe... It's this hidden secret that you have that you want to keep hidden because you're afraid that if someone finds out, you're afraid of like what they're going to say or what they're going to do to you. Or maybe it's this secret sin cycle that you keep going to over and over again and, and you don't really wanna go back to it, but you keep going back to it and you just feel enslaved to this uh, thing that you don't wanna be enslaved to. Or maybe you're believing a lie, a thought that's holding you captive like, um, I'm not good enough, or like no one wants me, or maybe n no one actually loves me. What is keeping you from experiencing, and I'm not talking about freedom, getting you to do whatever, whatever you wanna do, I'm talking about what, what's, are you clinging to and what's clinging to you that's causing you not to experience the freedom that Jesus has for you? Because the, the point of tonight's message, when it comes to worship, I want us to understand that worship brings us freedom. Worship brings us freedom. In, in fact, in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 16, there's this story when Paul and Silas, they, they come to this town called Ephesus. And when they get to Ephesus, they run into an influencer by the name of Lydia. Lydia invites them to come over to her house and to have dinner and to hang out and stay if they need to stay. And as they're hanging out, Lydia doesn't have a relationship with Jesus. And the next thing you know, Paul and Silas, they tell her about Jesus. She comes into a relationship with Jesus. One day, Paul and Silas decide to leave Lydia's house and then they go to the temple to where people are gonna be at to pray. And the reason why they're going to the place where people pray is to tell people about Jesus, this Messiah who, who died and was buried and three days later he came back to life. And as they're on the way to the temple, what ends up happening is, is this girl begins to follow them. And the Bible actually tells us that this girl was possessed by a demon. And as she follows Paul and Silas throughout the city of Ephesus, what ends up happening is she begins to yell out that these two love Jesus and they want to tell other people about Jesus. And this goes on for quite some time and finally Paul gets a little bit annoyed and he turns around and he tells her and to, to the demon and says, in the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of her. And in that moment when they utter the words in the name of Jesus, the demon flees. Which is really good news for her. But it's really bad news for her boss. Her boss was making money off of her um, because she could, by the power of the demon, predict the future. And so he gets upset and he gets a crowd together and he takes these two men outside of the city and they beat them and then they put them into prison. And this is where we pick up the story in Acts chapter 16, starting in verse 25. This is what Luke, the writer of Acts, tells us. Uh, around midnight, 
Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly there was a massive earthquake, and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. Now, I I love this story because this story reminds us of what happens when we actually worship God. When we worship God, the foundations of our lives may shake. The doors that seem closed begin to be open. When we worship God, the chains that take us captive fall off. Why does this happen? Because worship brings freedom. And and worship brings freedom because what happens when we worship is that when we worship God, we end up focusing on the truth. And, And the truth isn't a feeling or an idea. The truth that we focus on isn't something that we make up so that we can live our own truth. The truth is actually a person and his name is Jesus. So when we worship, what ends up happening is is we take our focus off of our circumstances and off of the things that we're going through and the things that are holding us captive and we place them onto Jesus who is the truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. And this is what Jesus would go on to say in John chapter 8, verse 31 through 32. He says, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. Here's the verse I want you to lean into. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you Free. So worship helps us to know the truth who is Jesus. And the promise of Jesus in these verses is that when we know the truth, that truth will actually set us free. So let me ask you the question again. What is keeping you from experiencing total freedom in Jesus? Because here's what I know. I know that Jesus is here in this space and place with us tonight. And, and, and as I've been praying through this message, the thing that he could just kept on saying to my heart was this, is I want to set some people free tonight. And so in just a few moments, here's, here's what we're going to do. I, I like, this is the message tonight. The message isn't you listening to me. The message is us applying what we just learned from Acts chapter 16. Because here's, here's what I'm going to do. In just a few moments, I'm going to pray. And as I pray, our adult leaders are going to circle around the room. We are, our student staff will be available as well. And after I pray, if you're here today, you, you, last week we, we asked you to identify a battle that you may be facing. If you're, if you're fighting a battle, if you find yourself being held captive by something, whether it's an it's a incorrect thought, whether it's an addiction, whether it's some struggle that you're going through, what, what I want you to do tonight is I want you to find freedom. And, and the way that you can find freedom is not by just going to an adult, but going to that adult and allowing them to pray for you. And that adult's gonna pray over you and pray with you and pray for you tonight. And then after you get done praying, Here's what I want you to do. I want you to return back to your seats. And I want you to worship. Because ultimately what worship is, is is worship is praising God in the future tense. We're gonna worship God tonight. He's worthy of our worship, but we're gonna worship God tonight because he's setting some of you free from the thing that you've been hanging on to, whether it's been for a year, five years, whatever it's been. Tonight is the night for you to find freedom. So we're gonna worship him tonight. And we're going to believe that he's already set you free from the things. I don't care if you're in sixth grade in here. Listen, I know some of you sixth graders, you're going through some stuff right now. You're going through it, and it's not just our high schoolers, it's sixth graders are going through some stuff. And so I want us to do this tonight, why? Because God loves you and cares for you so much that he doesn't want you to remain, remain in captivity to the thing that's holding you captive. He wants to set you free, and the reason why he wants to set you free is so that you can have a deeper relationship with him. And not only does he want you to have a deeper relationship with him, what he also wants for you is to use your story just like he used Hadley's story to help other people tonight. Because I believe that her honesty is gonna pave the way for some honesty in this place tonight. 
So if that's you and you find yourself being held captive by something, I'm gonna pray. And after I pray, go to the leader. They're gonna pray for you and then return and worship. If you're here tonight and you find yourself in your seat, you can be honest. And listen, I know there may be some of us in here that are living in the freedom that Jesus has for us completely. And if that's you, here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. I'm gonna ask you not to do what I'm gonna ask you to do. I'm gonna ask you not to talk to other people. And what I'm gonna ask you to do is I'm gonna ask you to pick up your spiritual weapons, the spiritual weapon of prayer and worship. And as you worship, I want you to believe in your heart that God is setting some of your friends and your peers free from some things tonight. I want you to be a part of the war room. It's time for us to go to battle. It's time for us to do it for them. Would you pray with me? And as I pray, I'm gonna ask our leaders to, to go around the room right now. Father, um, I've told them everything that you asked me to tell them. Jesus, I know that you're in this space and place right now. And your word is true. And what your word tells me is that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So Jesus, right now, I'm asking you, I'm asking you, to set some people free tonight. I'm asking you to help some people find freedom from the struggle that they've been struggling with for a while. I'm asking you to help them find freedom from the thought that is taking them captive, that they have no self-worth. Father, I'm asking you to set some of the guys in here that are addicted to pornography free tonight. I'm asking you, God, to set some of the people in this space and place that are addicted to drugs from drugs tonight. I'm asking you, God, for some of our middle schoolers to set them free from the thought that no one loves them and no one wants them. God, I'm asking you to set free anything that is taking a position against them knowing you. And I thank you for doing it because you are a good God and you are worthy to be praised. It's in your name that I pray. Amen. Let's respond as you need to respond this evening.
exaltation and I was born to lift your name above all names you hear the melody of all creation but there's a song
God, anointed one, who was and is and is to come, seated on the throne above, holy, holy, righteous one, who shed his blood, you proved to us the Father's love, Jesus Christ, be lifted up. in here. Um, if you're sitting down, I want to invite you to stand up with us. Um, if you're praying, continue to pray. And we're going to continue to believe God's working in this space and place right now. I don't know if you guys realize that or not. Um, but we want to continue to, to worship him. We're going to keep singing else. Who else is worthy? He is worthy of it all. May this be the anthem tonight. May this be the anthem of our souls and our hearts tonight that who else is worthy? Jesus is the only one who's worthy of all worship and honor and praise. So I wanna, I'm just going to challenge you guys. I, I see that you're already, a lot of you, you're going after it. You're going after it with Jesus. And I'm going to challenge you to go even more after it with Jesus. Like if, if I could maybe just challenge us to do something real quick, because I, I know that there's still some of us that we're, we're, we're kind of chatty with, the, with our neighbors. And, and that's cool and everything like that. But don't miss out on what God wants to do right now in your life. So I'm going to just challenge you. Like my dad... Uh, <laughs> He used to do, he was in student ministry at one point, and he used to tell us, he would say, hey, draw a circle, an imaginary circle around yourself. And just imagine for a second that it's just you and Jesus. I know we're singing this song, he's worthy of all, but just imagine you're, you're singing, and he's, he's sitting there, and you can see Jesus, and he's just saying, hey, and you're saying you're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all, Jesus. How amazing would that be? So Jesus, I just wanna pray over us right now, God. I, I just pray, God, that um, as people are continuing to be prayed for, we're gonna sing this again. And Jesus, I just pray right now that, that we, could just, we could just imagine it's just us, just you and me and them and you, Lord. I pray just for a moment, God, that they could get a, just a picture of who you are that they would see the Jesus that I'm seeing right now that's looking at them, that's reminding them that he's not mad at them. That they could see the Jesus that's there is just saying, hey, I'm welcoming you in. Would you, just, would you just welcome me into this space and place? And so Jesus, we welcome you. We welcome you into each circle right now because you are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all and there is no one else who is worthy, Jesus, like you are worthy. Let's sing to Jesus right now.
Let's give Jesus praise in this place tonight. He's truly worthy of it all. We, we're so glad that you guys came and you're here with us. In just a few moments, I promise I'm going to get you uh, to your groups. Just a couple of things real quick, and I want to wrap up uh, this service. This is what worship is. It's just us surrendering to God on the, on the daily, on the, on the moment of moments. It's us using worship as our weapon and knowing that God always comes through and brings us freedom. This is what worship is, and he is worthy of it all. That's what we want you to get out of this series. Um, next week is Thanksgiving. Who's excited for Thanksgiving? Okay. Who's, who's going to like eat and take a nap? Eat and take a nap. Or my, yeah. All right. Uh, it's going to be good. Hey, next Wednesday night, just a reminder real quick. Um, we, we actually will not be gathering next Wednesday night. However, when we come back in December, we have our December one night. Okay, so tonight you're going to receive some cards. I'm going to encourage you. I know it's two weeks. I'm going to challenge you. What, what's one night about? One night's all about us. A, we're going to have some fun, but we're going to invite some people that don't have a relationship with Jesus. And so I want you to guys to begin to invite to that. Last two things. One more real quick. Hey, we are, as a church, we're finishing up this season called Unshakable. And I know there's a lot of us that in this room that participated in this thing called Unshakable. What Unshakable is all about is, yes, it's about generosity, but what Unshakable is really about is us showing love to the world around us. And this weekend on the 24th, we are actually having an Unshakable celebration. And here's, here's what I would love to do, all right? I would love for all of you to show up on Sunday morning at 9.30. And let us take over this entire section down here, okay? 9.30 Sunday morning, we are going to celebrate. We've got some exciting things that are gonna be happening. If you guys don't know, one of the things that's a part of Unshakable is this, is that we believe in meeting people in their point of pain. And so we actually have a care center that we're building where there's gonna be an opportunity. If you're dealing with things like anxiety, depression, stuff like that, you're gonna be able to get care there. And, and one of the things that we've said as a church is there will not be an obstacle for any one of you, kids and students who need help, which means that if you need it and you can't afford it, we're gonna pay for it. All right, we're, we're gonna be on the forefront of that. So that's unshakable. So hey, let's fill this up on Sunday morning at 9.30, okay? Let's blow this place off the roof. Last but not least, and then we're gonna go to groups. If you need to know something tonight, I want you to know this from my heart, that I love you. I love each and every single one of you. I don't care if this is your first time here. I don't care if this is your millionth time here. I say that because I genuinely prayed for every person that was gonna be here tonight. I love you. I want you to know that your life has a lot of meaning and value. I want you to know that God, he looks at you and he sees a masterpiece that he wants to put on display for the world to see. And so as you go out into this world today, I want you to know that you're not going out into the world as broken people. You're going out into the world as a masterpiece that God is going to put on display for people to be. So here's my challenge to you. I know I keep adding things to this, but this is it right here. I wanna challenge you to be the light of the world to those around you tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday at school, all right? All right, let's go to our communities. We love you guys. See you in two weeks.